get here? It's snowing really hard out there. I wasn't sure I'd make it, so you're welcome. You're right, sorry. Thanks for coming to stay with me. Anything for my best friend? Now that I'm here, what do you want to do? There's no one else in the whole dorm, so we could do anything. We could go up to the snack machines and get some chips. I'm not really hungry. Could watch a movie? No. I was thinking about when we were younger and had sleepovers. You always told the best scary stories. I learned them all from my older brother. That's the part from having an older brother. Well, you thought there were a lot of perks from that. Look, I know he's off limits. He's your brother. Did he ever tell you about the click clack? What's that? Not what? Who? All the best scary stories are about the click clack. Mm, sorry, he didn't. Do you have any more that Jason told you that I haven't heard? Ah. It's cool. This has happened before. I know where the breaker is. You want to hear one of the stories? Sure. This happened to a friend of a friend. We'll call him Mark. He went camping with his family. This was the first year they trusted him to be in his own tent, and his younger brother Anthony tagged along. His brother was scared of being alone in the tent, but was excited to have Mark taking care of him. The sun set so late that night that when they both crawled into their sleeping bags, they instantly fell asleep. A few hours later, Mark woke up, really needing to go to the bathroom. He turned on the small camping light they had, but left it in case Anthony woke up alone in the dark. Mark quietly left the tent, zipping the flap up behind him. He walked far enough away that all he could see from the tent was a small glow. As he was peeing, he heard someone walking up behind him, small footsteps. He finished up and turned around, his heart beating as quick as bee wings. It was Anthony who stared at him with a sullen face. What's wrong, bro? Mark asked. There's someone in the tent. Anthony whispered back, grabbing Mark's hand. As Mark walked back, he could still see the faint glow of the camping light. It made shadows on the wall of the tent, and they moved as if someone were in there. The flap was open a small bit. Anthony gripped Mark's hand tight, and they walked slowly closer. Mark didn't want to wake his parents. This was his first time having this kind of responsibility, and he didn't want to lose their trust. Mark stopped a few feet from the tent and let go of Anthony's hand. Stay here, he said. Anthony nodded back. Mark grabbed the zipper of the flap and started to unzip it the rest of the way. A small figure faced away from him, clutching Anthony's pillow. The figure turned to look at him, and it trembled with fear. He felt panic set in as he recognized the creature. In a small, shaky voice, it spoke. Who are you talking to, big bro? That was fine, I guess. It's not as scary as the click clack. What's so scary about the click clack? What it can do to you without you even knowing it's there. The noises it makes, they paralyze you. So cover your ears. That only works when the noises aren't coming from inside you.
She was a good child and had a loving mother and father that worked long hours sometimes. She came home from school and neither of her parents were home. They both had to put in an extra shift. She'd have to make her own dinner and clean up the kitchen, but they promised it was going to be worth it as this meant she could get a new bike for her birthday. Sandra made herself something simple so as to not have too much to clean up and watch TV until bedtime. It was quiet in the big house. As she walked upstairs, she turned off the house lights until all that was left was the one in her room. She decided to do a little sneaky late night reading. If her parents were home, they would have made her turn off the light and go to bed. She kept her bedroom door open so she could hear when they were coming home. She read for a while and was starting to doze off when she heard the front door open. She quickly turned off her light and rolled away from the door to pretend to sleep. A minute later, someone walked up to her doorway. A chill hung in the air as they entered the room. Hey kid, you up? Her mom whispered. She touched Sandra's arm, running her cold hand down the length of her cheek and shoulder. Sandra continued to play asleep and her mom left the room. Sandra rolled back over toward the doorway. She could see out into the hallway. The bathroom door was closed with the light leaking out from beneath the door. A few minutes later, the front door opened again. Quick footfalls ran up the stairs to her room. She tried to roll over quickly, but her dad caught her. He was sweaty, tears running down his face. He didn't even bother to turn on her bedroom light, and so he was shadowed, and his face looked horrifying. What's wrong? she asked. Her dad sobbed, almost unable to speak. Your mother. Something happened on her way home. A bus didn't see her and hit her. She died instantly. Sandra looked deep into her father's face and then passed him to the bathroom, where she could see the closed bathroom door, the shadows dancing around in the room. That one was a little better than the first one. Still not scary, though. Well, if you don't think my stories are good enough, you tell me one. You sure? They're really scary. Yeah, tell me all about this Click Clack guy, then. The Click Clack isn't a guy. It's what you're not expecting. Well, if it's what you're not expecting, wouldn't you expect it, then? Maybe, but you don't. The Click Clack makes you not pay attention to it. It's familiar, like a smell you remember from childhood. Is it like any other creature? No, it's really mundane. Like walking through a doorway and forgetting what you're trying to do. That doesn't sound scary. It's not at first, that's what makes it worse. What it can do though, I'm too scared to even describe it. But if you're not scared of it, why don't you tell me another story? I think I'm out of them. Okay, tell me about your day then. Sure, there was an alert on campus about a huge storm coming. All the other people in the dorm decided to either drive home since Christmas is coming, and they'd rather leave early in order to miss the storm. I didn't, though. I don't really have anywhere else to go since I don't have a car, so I'm waiting for my mom to come pick me up tomorrow. I tried calling any other people I know, and no one could come keep me company. See? You know all of that, but you're not thinking. You're letting your brain fill in the gaps. Wait, what? 